What's up guys? Welcome back to Chuckle back to another video. And in today's video, um, we're back with the super, we're back with all my builds, and I just kind of wanted to make this video of a, a more of an update video. And uh, something that actually happened this morning is definitely worth making an update on. But before we actually continue off with this video, I do want to say this video is sponsored by my boys at Simply Carbon Fiber. I don't know if you guys know, but I just recently upgraded my wallet from their regular carbon fiber wallet, which is somewhere around over here, um, to their Forge carbon fiber wallet, which they both look amazing, but I mean, guys, Forge looks absolutely gorgeous. I've been using this thing honestly nonstop. And what's super cool about the wall is you literally just push this and all your cards pretty much just come out. Now I don't want obviously you guys getting my credit card information, but um, yeah, all your cards pop out, you pull out the one you need, you can even tap it if uh, you know, if the, if the card reader is a tapper, if you know what I mean, or you can just use it as a fan and just flex your carbon fiber wallet, you know, just something like that. But what's also super nice is that once you put all this back together, you also do have your money in the back, which I just added there, you know, just gotta um, do it there for the video. I honestly don't carry much cash with me, but if you guys are the kind of guys that likes to put a lot of money in your wallets, bada bing bada bang, I like keeping it somewhere we're safe. But the cool thing about this wallet, guys, is if you need to carry cash, cards, anything, you can do it all in this small minimalistic wallet, which I love so, so, so much, and not to mention carbon fiber, guys, carbon fiber. They don't only sell carbon fiber wallets, they sell watches, a bunch of accessories like glasses and a bunch of other things. So make sure you check out the website down below. I have one of their watches right over here with the Forge carbon fiber inlay. I don't know if you guys can see that, but man, talk about luxurious. I love this thing. I only wear this thing when I go out with friends and family. This is like an absolute flex. I wear my Apple Watch. I'm just getting some work done, trying to check messages, but this is my go-to as soon as I head out of the house. Make sure to use my code down below if you guys are trying to get a discount. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get back into the video. So every single day on Instagram, I've been getting a DM and literally it's like, Nor, what builds do you have still and what builds have you gotten rid of? And uh, you know, some of them I kind of kept a secret mainly because and if I say I sold it, you guys are gonna be extremely upset with me. And end of the day, you guys know, the goal is the R8. I've been trying to get the R8 since I started YouTube back in like 2013. 13 like that was a dream car of mine and I told myself I want to get it through not a business not a job through YouTube so I can grind it so hard to make YouTube a reality thank the Lord so far so good as you guys can see we've done so many builds throughout the year and there's actually so many that didn't actually make it to this list um, mainly because a lot of them was not actually complete like for example we did an x5 where's the not x5 uh, m5 m5 so the m5 section something filled out we got an e60 m5 we rebuilt it but unfortunately never got it running so I don't consider that a successful rebuild um, we got plenty more three series other than these five three series. We're not gonna be doing any more three series for a long, long, long time, mainly because we pretty much accomplished it here and I wanna knock out even more things on this board. We did actually save an X5. Um, we did get an i8 and fully modify. I might actually wanna get one as a daily because they're actually going for like 30K on Copart and how crazy would it be to daily an i8 for 30K? That's cheaper than a Tesla, that's cheaper than a Camry. That's how crazy they're going for, like pretty cheap numbers on Copart and honestly, 50 MPG guys, the best daily for the money. Honestly, like but I'm thinking about it. Like honestly, <laughs> I want to do an eight series one day. I three, uh, unfortunately, ours was unsuccessful. My brother actually got an I three, something that you guys don't know. Um, so I might even just do a little build on that, get a bunch of little things, just modify all my video, so we can add that to the board right there. Z three, Z four, we never got any of those. Again, a lot of cars that I want to do, but we also did that M four right there. A bunch of M threes, with possibly a G eighty. That's why I left this spot right over here. But also possibly gonna be putting that E ninety two M three that we recently just finished with forty two thousand miles. A clean example, clean title, beautiful car. But what I'm trying to say right now is that yes, I had to go through a lot of builds to get where I am today, which God bless, I am so, so, so grateful for the position that I'm in today. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying all of this mainly because I know I'm gonna have some people that's gonna be like, Nor, why'd you sell that car, dude? You shouldn't have sold it. I actually had a company reach out to me, which was very disrespectful, um, when I actually bought this house. I sold the E36 M3 track car, which I know I made promises, I didn't fulfill. That's why I'm no longer making any more promises on this channel because um, honestly, I wanna be a man of my word and I haven't been recently. So not recently, recently I have been pretty good. I'm working on it. But like in the past when I said, hey, I'm gonna do a single turbo N54 or E36 M3 track car, those are things that I said and I wanted to do. I had all the intention to do, uh, but just life hit me in the gut and I was like, okay, the N54 single turbo build um, was just gonna cost too much money and I didn't have the money at the time. And then the track car, um, you guys know that I'm actually in my own house right now. This is not 
a rented home. Um, this is not like my friend's home. This is my home. And this is like, end of the day, this means a lot to me. And to make this happen, um, I had to get rid of a lot of my cars, a lot of my projects, and a lot, and pretty much my goals shifted. And uh, I actually had one sponsor that reached out to me saying that I don't care if your life, your goals changed or whatever. You told me you were gonna take this car on the track. That's the only reason I gave you $70 off a $700, you know, I, 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 I paid $630 for something that was $700 and he had the audacity to reach out to me and say, I don't care about your life decisions or things shifted in your life or whatever. You gave me an expectation that you're gonna be taking to the track and promoting my company for $70. I honestly cannot believe he sold himself short like that because I am never doing business with him ever again. I'm never gonna refer anyone to him again. I've only promoted him a couple times when I was doing the E36M3 build, but I'm honestly never gonna be working with that company again. So anywho, uh, so yeah, that's up there on the E36M3. Everyone keeps asking me where that car go. It is sold. I, I use it for a down payment on this home. I have no regrets. I'm sorry if I let some of you guys down. That's actually a car that I literally still have bucket seats in the backyard for. I, had, I have Sparco bucket seats that I picked up from Keys Motorsports. That was over a G right there. And I have it sitting back there and I, I, I literally got it for the build, um, but I had to end up selling the build and uh, things happen. You guys can clearly see, wasn't like my intentions, but when the house was closing in on the house, fees kept on adding up and I wanted to make that house happened so I had to just sell what I could to make ends meet so I hope you guys understand all anywho so now with the super the super finally I've been driving it around honestly I've been driving around just like this um I, I honestly just haven't been driving around like crazy mainly because I don't want any rock chips or anything hitting this surface real quick I did tell the paint shop to just reprimer this one more time um just to make sure if there is any little dirts or specks or anything like that it's going to be perfect but yes are we have an official date to drop off the Supra on Thursday so this Thursday thank the lord it's been like three months guys that we've been working on this build we're gonna finally be able to take this to the paint shop get it painted get it been verified and then we can finally start the modifications on this car we have literally boxes on boxes over there for this car which is absolutely insane and we still have actually a couple more things over here um we have the yellow seat belt that i need to reinstall on the passenger side uh we we, have, we got a lot of things for the super coming up not to mention boltons and tunes down there literally from burger tuning it's gonna be this thing is gonna be insane but then that leaves us with a few other cars we have the truck the truck you guys know is a truck you know it has to stay in the family the truck is doing its job and I actually use the truck for things other than just my car stuff for once I actually been working on my front yard which I don't know if you guys know about but this whole section here was super ugly just as ugly as this side and uh, me and my father-in-law uh, my father-in-law my, my, my wife's family came over for like two weeks and I said, what better thing to do than to work together and just, you know, some family bonding moments and work on our front yard. So that was super, super, super fun. Also a lot of work. We dug like probably like six inches, honestly, deep, which is honestly a little too much. Three inches from that end, three inches from that end, about six inches down here. We had to pretty much put dirt back on top. And if you guys know Cali weather, to literally dig six inches deep, guys, was the hardest thing in the world. It took us like two or three days of digging, two guys doing all this. And then we finally got uh, the weed blocker on there. We have a drip system hooked up. We uh, blocked off everything else. We got four big plants right here. We have dividers. I'm gonna be putting rocks on both sides. I'm thinking black rocks and white rocks. It looks so, so, so good. I have the vision and uh, we're almost there, guys. I just, I, I got hit with COVID and uh, that, that that's what happened with that. So that had to get delayed for a little bit. So yeah, I might as well give you guys an update with my life as well. I actually went out to the Keys Auto Show and as soon as I got back from the flight, I went to a wedding and then from the wedding, the next day, me and my wife woke up and we were just getting like the chills and a bunch of other stuff, massive like migraines, um, seriously bad sore throat. So me and my wife have been literally in bed for like a week. So I'm sorry um, that we couldn't actually get more content out sooner. Um, and that's why honestly I'm making this video because when I actually sat down for a week in my bed, I was like just looking at my channel and I was like, wow, there's a lot of things I didn't tell you guys. So this video is literally just me telling you guys full updates of everything that's going on, what's gonna happen hopefully. And uh, yeah, so basically I had COVID and I'm finally recovered. I finally feel good. Um, so I'm finally getting out of the house. Finally gonna be working on my front yard again. Finally gonna be working on some more builds. So super stoked with all that stuff. But yeah, the truck has been an absolute trooper. Absolutely love that thing. I was actually gonna sell it to upgrade to a newer truck. But then honestly, guys, there's nothing better than having an older truck. Because the cool thing about an older truck, or at least a cheap truck at least, is that you can use it and abuse it and do whatever you want to it. End of the day, you don't feel guilty about it because you're not ruining the value of the truck. The truck is cheap already. Like I'm only into that truck maybe like 
like seven or eight thousand dollars and that truck is honestly a trooper that's exactly what i want when i wanted to do it i could just throw dirt in the back I could throw car parts in the back i could throw oil in the back do whatever i want right and then just just wash it who cares if it gets scuffed up because like it's a seven eight thousand dollar truck it's not a crazy expensive truck it's not a 20 or honestly 20 is even not bad for a truck trucks nowadays like i went to ford and they wanted freaking like eighty thousand dollars for an f-150 premium like or I don't know if it was called the premium or it was like the, the King Ranch edition. $80,000 for an F-150, like that, that, it's an F-150. Like you need an F-250 to tow like on top of that. So anyhow, I feel like if I ever spend that much money on a truck, that truck is literally just gonna be babied and I just don't get the point of having a truck if you're gonna baby. So yeah, that is the update with the Supra. Hopefully going off for paint in about two days. That's update on the truck. It's not going anywhere. Absolutely love that thing. Let's go ahead and head inside so I can show you guys one other board that I've been working on other than this board and then actually head to the backyard and show you guys my other goals and visions and plans and uh, what's going on in the backyard as well. I, and also, the, the 328 is not there right now for, for good reason. So when I actually took the thumbnail to uh, today's video, I had the 328, it was here this morning. I had a random person, it wasn't a follower, a random person hit me up, he's like, hey man, I wanna come check out the car. And I was like, hey, I mean, I'm about to start filming the video, but if you wanna come check out the car, come check out the car. He comes through, checks out the car, he absolutely loves the car. Um, he told me how he wants to negotiate on this. I mean, his, his mom helped him negotiate, which was like, <laughs> I mean, props to her for helping out. I mean, that's awesome. Um, and honestly, she wanted to save, you know, $500, which I get every person wants to save money. We already negotiated over messages, but obviously always people want to negotiate on top of that in person. And honestly, I could have stayed firm to my price, but considering that the car I was blessed with in the first place, I decided to accept another like knockdown on the price, mainly because I'm not in that car too much and I, we made some pretty good money on there. So God bless. And all those funds, of course, are going towards the R8 dream and uh, also uh, just whatever else we have coming up for the future. Coming around to this room, guys, this thing is getting filled up. So the 2022 goal is to get an Audi R8 and I'm still like, I really want to get a 2022, like not a 2022, but like a brand new R8, like a 2020, you know, second gen R8. But honestly, guys, um, just where the market's kind of headed and just prices, honestly, that the R8s has reached the price of McLarens and stuff like that. I'm just over here thinking, if, do I want a second gen R8 or do I want a McLaren 570S? But my dream's always been an R8. I don't know where my head's kind of going with this. I was even thinking maybe get a first gen R8 and then upgrade from the first gen R8 um, to a McLaren 570 or something like that. I don't know, that 570 you guys just looks amazing for the money let me know what you guys think down below but we still gonna be trying to achieve that goal by the end of this year and i'm definitely gonna be using all your guys inputs to help me with this big purchase one of the biggest purchases of my life but yeah guys we got the e92 m3 in the like literally early last year i mean late last year early this year um i completed that build sold that build um so that was an absolute blessing um the atlantis blue f80 we did end up selling that also getting the e92 from that car from that you know transaction we ended up selling that car. We sold the X5 build as well. And now currently we're still trying to sell the 640. I'm actually gonna be adding the Instagrams to all these owners right down here. So every time I show this, you guys will see the the guy that bought that car, the guy that bought this car. So you guys can also, if you if you miss these cars on the channel, you can go follow their Instagram and they're posting. I know the guy that bought the Atlantis Blue F80, he's posting a lot of content on there. So I'll make sure to put his Instagram right here. Hopefully the next time you guys see this vision board. And I know the guy that bought this was also a follower. The guy that bought this was a follower. The guy that bought this unfortunately was not a follower, but you guys already see three series content all over YouTube. So um, nothing that, you know, it's a beautiful build, but nothing too crazy. It's not like the Atlantis blue like that car i mean even i want to go back and see it that thing is an amazing car one-off car you guys know what i mean but the 640 whoever ends up purchasing now put their instagram down here as well um so again if any actually any of you guys want to get this to contribute to um the dream the 640 is valued at around twenty four thousand dollars on car gurus um so car gurus is saying it's $24,000. The average with the, was 78,000 miles, which is the mileage that we have. Clean title, two keys. Um, so that is the situation with that car. Obviously, we also had the whole engine out of the car. We did every single gasket. We even did the transmission fluids. Like literally everything on this car in terms of gasket seals, fluids has been replaced, coolant, oil, um, transmission, everything. So for anyone that wants a six series, it's very well serviced and it's a 640 N55, way better honestly in terms of fuel efficiency and reliability compared to the 650 in my opinion. 
I'm not actually gonna be asking market value. The market value is 24,000. Um, and honestly, just because I got it for a good deal, and again, if it's one of you guys that buy it, I'm a happy guy. I already got a Carvana offer for $18,900 for this car. So basically $19,000 for this car. So honestly, if I can sell it, you know, out in the public for 20, I'm happy. That's 4,000 below market. That's only a thousand more than what Carvana offered you. So little if you bought it and drove it for, you know, 5,000 miles, put it on Carvana after, you're not honestly gonna lose anything. I guess that's just what happens when you buy a car under market, which is what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to bless somebody because I'm also been blessed with this purchase as well. And I'm still going to make money end of the day. So it's a win-win. So again, $20,000, that is my bottom dollar. Hopefully we can make that hopefully pretty soon because as soon as we sell this car, we're getting a car that we're going to need to fulfill another project in the backyard. And what build might that be? Uh, the E91 M3 build. I've been literally searching for an E90 M3 for the longest time, guys. And everything I'm finding, honestly, um, is just going way over market. Like, like a clean title E90 M3 is going for like $22,000 with similar mileage to the chassis on this car. And I'm like, for $22,000 clean title, that's a pretty dang good deal. But the salvage ones with similar mileage is going for like 13, 14 total. And I still need to go buy more parts. I still have to pay the fees. I have to get it delivered. And I'm like, wow, that's almost clean title price. And I just can't justify that for a parts car. I'm trying to get one delivered to my front door totaled for around $12,000. That is the goal. So hopefully as soon as we sell the 640i, we're gonna be trying to make that purchase and make this build our next priority so do not worry guys i did not forget about the wagon it's literally chilling here in my backyard and uh, it's going to be our number one priority hopefully pretty soon now the next thing over here just chilling like a villain is the 550 that we ended up picking up from a uh, pick and pull yard so pick and pull had this complete 550 im sport fully loaded insanely loaded like literally every option that you can honestly imagine is in this car we picked her up for 2100 dollars, and uh the issue with this car is it is not a running drive so hopefully in the next video this next upcoming video we're going to be trying to get this thing running and driving by doing a full transmission service. Um, so wish me luck on that. Hopefully it's going to be the next video for you guys. And right back there, that is the 640 that we showed so much love. And this thing, guys, this thing has massaging seats. Like what BMW do you guys know has massaging, heated, and cooling? So this is like honestly an amazing daily also considering the fact that it is an N55. It has the big upgraded touchscreen right in there as well. It's got Michelin tires in here. Good tread. Like honestly guys, for a clean title two owner, no accidents because the issue with this car was not an accident. It was the engine. We ended up getting that swapped. All the gaskets swapped out. This thing is in better condition than it's honestly ever been. And honestly guys, I've considered keeping the 640 just because of how luxurious and comfortable of a daily this thing could be. But because of how much the car is valuable, you that daily a car like that is gonna hold us back from achieving our dream sooner and I want to have it sooner than later in this point in the video guys uh, it's Nor Hamadi about to throw some wisdom so um, for those of you guys who don't want to hear Nor talk about wisdom and just don't like me you can just click off the video <laughs> but for those of you guys who do care about me and do care about my, 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 my words of wisdom I guess <laughs> Um, I do want to just mention something that again I get so many DMs about all the time. People always ask me how do I make things happen? How do I like how did I end up getting the super going from where I was before and just a couple years ago? How do I honestly start investing my money and how do I honestly just keep like you know upgrading and changing up and things like that? And the key is to everything that I'm doing is literally what I'm doing. To be able to constantly elevate in life, you cannot settle with what you have. The thing is, unless you're making bank, like absolute bank, which most people and especially me, I don't make bank. You guys saw how much I make on YouTube. I, I just pretty much make everything that I do and invest. So when I buy cars to enjoy cars, I buy cars, I modify them, I enjoy them, but on an investment mindset because end of the day, I do it within a cost margin. So end of the day, I do this all, I make my videos, I enjoy the car, and then I sell the car, hoping that I make a little bit of profit or even just break even after all the modifications and making the content. And then honestly, moving on and moving on and moving on. And honestly, cars can be a smart investment me, um, but it's not the best investment, mainly because if you do decide to keep that car long term, all cars depreciate. Mileage depreciate a car, years depreciate a car, um, economy depreciates a car. Yeah, the car market's high right now and it's booming, but it's not gonna be like this. It's actually the car market is coming down little by little. So for those of you guys who do want to constantly elevate in life and get nicer cars every year, like that's the goal. Like, you know, next year you want to get a 2019, the next year you want to get a 2021, the next year you want to get your first supercar or whatever. 
and the goal is is to constantly, constantly change cars. So long story short, I haven't even made the dream come true, but if I can make it happen by the end of this year, which is getting that supercar, how I got there is by literally buying a car, enjoying it, modifying it, modifying it in ways that will increase the value, take good pictures, and just flip it. Like I'm, I'm enjoying nice cars, but I'm not keeping any of my cars. I know a lot of people want me to keep my cars, but I have an end goal, a bigger picture, and that's not and that's not what I have right now. I enjoy everything that I have, especially the Supra. I'm definitely gonna be enjoying the Supra a little bit more longer term, just because it's a new, new car, and I, I, I feel like the market for the Supras right now are pretty good. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping that a little bit longer than the rest of my cars that I am. But even the Supra, when push comes to shove to getting that R8, we're gonna have to do what we have to do, and I don't see that there's any issue with that. So if you guys are enjoying the journey, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys have any more questions when it comes to stuff like that, make sure to hit me up on Instagram. I just wanted to pretty much clarify right here because I get so many DMs about that on Instagram, and I and I hope this little segment kind of helped. But yeah, guys, that's gonna have to conclude the video. If you guys enjoyed this video, little update video, make sure to smash the like button. But without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all the next one. Peace out.